Welcome to Intuitive Eating Wednesdays. I am um, coming in here pre pretty early, earlier than my usual time to do our weekly live stream. Today we are talking about a hot topic, hot, hot, hot. It is about that bathroom scale. But before we get into it, I do have a few announcements. Number one, I have one spot left in the Whole Body Trust Intuitive Eating Program. I just got off a Zoom with one of our newest members and I was orienting her to the program, to the modules, to the community forum, and she is so excited to get started. She is so motivated. She is done with feeling bad about herself and her body and trying to shrink and sculpt her body according to what society deems is what a woman should look like. So I am excited to get going with her and the other women. I have one spot left in this group. If you are interested to learn more about it, then just send me a message or comment below this video because here's the thing. This journey is the most fulfilling journey you will go on in your life. Food does not have to be complicated in your life. Food can be easy. It can be enjoyable. It can be pleasurable. But going this journey alone is often very challenging and there's no reason to do it alone. So if you're interested in the one spot left in the Whole Body Trust Intuitive Eating Group Coaching Program, please let me know. Second, I have a free challenge coming up for you ladies. Monday, February 12th is when we start all that week. We will be digging into the and yo-yo dieting challenge. So I will pop the link in this group so you can join us there live. You will walk away with some, many I should say, wins to get you started on your journey or to help you get unstuck on your journey um, and hopefully with a desire to keep on going. All right, today, for your worth beyond the scale. How many of you weigh yourself? I posted about this question the other day. I had several people respond. My question is, why do you use the scale? Why are you weighing yourself? And how is it that actually the scale worsens your physical and your mental health? It actually hinders your intuitive eating journey. Diet culture has a way of sneaking into our lives, whether you're looking for it or not, especially during this new year. We're still at the start of the new year. And you still have that little bird chirping in your ear, you know, this is the, you know, new year. This is the year you're going to get your dream body. And here's a new diet that you should try. Well, it happens all the time, left and right, on social media, online, um, your friends, your family members, you know, well, my New Year's resolution is to lose weight, or, you know, I'm, I'm going to be on a diet and this is going to be the year. I really finally found the thing that's going to help me. When diet culture seems to be all around you and everyone you know is falling for it, you might even think, ah, maybe I'll hop on that diet bandwagon as well. And maybe I will change myself the way I want to. But just before you, st but before you step on that scale this year, please, before you get on that diet bandwagon, please, let me tell you why weighing yourself and tracking your weight day in and day out or multiple times a day is actually way more harmful for you and your body um, than it is helpful. Now, a scale can be a good indicator of many things. Seeing if your suitcase is over the weight limit, you know, before you go on a trip for the airplane limits. Measuring ingredients in a baking recipe, perhaps. Or maybe weighing produce at the grocery store before you buy it so you know how much you're buying. It's useful to know exact measurements of many things, but not your body. Certainly not your body. Our bodies are constantly changing and growing, not just over the years, but even day to day, hour to hour, minute to minute. While you may think it's helpful to see that change being represented by the numbers on a scale due to what diet culture has led you to believe, stepping on the scale is actually going to diminish your self-worth and how you feel about yourself. So number one, it gives the power to numbers to determine your worth. When deciding to start a diet or focus on weight loss, 
evidently, the number you first see when you step on the scale is going to make you feel upset, right? So if you're at the top of the dieter's dilemma cycle, where, oh my God, I want to be thin, I want to lose weight, that's the top, top of this vicious cycle. You step on the scale, and now you're really upset. Once you've allowed the scale to determine your worth, and that the number you see you deem as quote unquote bad, you start to give power to these numbers. These are meaningless numbers. You allow those numbers to decide your worth, and then it of course lowers your self-esteem. I can't believe I weigh that much. I really let myself go. Have you ever said that to yourself? Raise a hand in the comments. I'm never going to find a boyfriend, find a partner, get the um the the promotion at the job until I change that number on the scale. Have you ever thought that as well? So number one, you're giving so much power to these numbers and it causes you to feel really badly about yourself. Number two, it triggers disordered eating patterns. Think about it. After you see a number on the scale that you think is quote unquote bad or oh my God, so high or I've never been this way before, right? The rest of your eating, your mentality, your self-esteem, that day is what? Influenced by what you saw on that piece of metal. You'll be hyper aware of that number, which can cause the immediate need to restrict, the immediate need to then say, but I need to lose weight. And you fall prey to the traps of diet culture. So restriction, cutting out food groups, limiting, you know, when you're going to eat, maybe skipping meals, over-exercising. Even if you see a number that you think is quote-unquote good on the scale, it can still be followed by disordered eating patterns. And you may say, wow, that's better than what I was expecting. So I'm going to have some dessert tonight because you are tying the right to have dessert to a number on a scale. Again, we're giving power to this number. It's dictating what you're eating or not eating. Food is not a reward nor something that you need to earn. Just remember that. And number three, it disregards that our bodies are always changing. Our bodies are constantly changing, my friends. The liquids we drink, the foods we eat, the sleep we get, the way we move that day, the stress that we have, it's not possible for our bodies to stay the same all the time. Different seasons of life also change our body's shape, irregardless to what the number says. Those fluctuations are going to be indicated on the scale. And if you're constantly weighing yourself, it's going to make you think that you're doing something wrong. You're doing something bad when your weight moves up a few pounds, right? How did I gain two pounds since yesterday? Oh my God, I need to be extra good today. Might be something you hear yourself say. Number four, it pulls the focus away from your health. The real reason that you think you want to lose weight is for your health, right? Unfortunately, the diet culture makes us think that health is dictated by a number on the scale, and it's not. The scale is not a magic machine. While it tells you a number, it is not an indicator of your health. I promise you that. No matter how much doctors or the media or anybody else make you think it is, after diet culture has convinced you that you, quote unquote, need to diet to change the number on the scale, you're likely going to pick up unhealthy eating patterns just to change the number to be one that is more, quote unquote, acceptable by society. An unhealthy, disordered relationship with food can cause a multitude of health problems that the scale won't tell you about, including high or low blood pressure, a lack of nutrients impacting your organs, weakness, diabetes, cardiovascular disease, and so forth, and insulin resistance, by the way, as well. Five, it creates shame, anxiety, frustration, and obsession with your body and your food choices. It's no secret that seeing a number on a scale that you're not satisfied with is going to make you feel some way, it's going to give you an emotion, right? Anger, insecurity, feeling upset, frustrated, sad, defeated, hopeless, 
helpless. The shame and the unpleasant feelings that you may feel from the result of weighing yourself can affect your whole day. The way you eat, the way you dress, the people you spend time with, the way you interact with people or don't interact with people or isolate yourself from people. Additionally, if the number on the scale isn't moving after you've been quote unquote dieting or you've been quote unquote good, it can lead to also that frustration followed by a binge slash going off track from your diet plan. So you might say, I tried so hard this week to be quote unquote good and the scale is not moving. What is the use? I might as well eat this entire bag of chips right now and just forget about it. And then you go into this sedation uh, with food. You sedate yourself and you kind of just numb out. And so you come out of that binge and feel like I'm at the top of this dieter's dilemma again. Oh my God, I want to be thin. I want to lose weight. And you start the entire cycle again. All that scale is going to do is allow you to tie your self-worth to a number value. It forces you to believe that your worth is defined by a set of rules, a strict number, and if you don't fit into that mold, then you're not worthy, you're not deserving, and you're not healthy. Instead of giving power to the numbers, please, let's move away from the scale, let's move away from the diets, let's move away from the rules, even rules that you've created for yourself around eating, And let's really start to tap into the intuitiveness of our body to help you recognize your true value and appreciate your body exactly how it is. We have to think about acceptance. I talked last week about the value of acceptance, right? Accepting your hero in our body doesn't mean you're quote unquote throwing in the towel. Let's focus on how you, your body feels when you eat intuitively truly take into account the feeling piece of it, right? You're when you're hungry, when you're full, when you have a craving. I have spoken with so many individuals lately who are unsure, like, why do I keep quote unquote overeating? How can I stop? There's so much that goes into unraveling all of this, right? The scale doesn't get to tell you what you can eat, when you can eat and how much you can eat. You decide that. But you are often disconnected from those intuitive signals and we've got to get back in touch with it. Please understand that health looks different on everyone. There is no such thing as a goal weight or an ideal weight or a goal body type because it would be impossible to achieve. Everybody is different. We are all wonderfully made and unique. Trying to fit into a mold is unrealistic because health portrays itself in many different ways in different bodies. Realize, please, all that your body does for you. Intuitive eating focuses on this concept of unconditional permission to eat, which means allowing yourself to eat regardless of physical appearance for fuel and for strength. We all have quote unquote good body image days and quote unquote bad body image days. I'm not going to say that everybody always feels great in their body every single day, no matter what size, right? It's just not going to happen that way. But being able to see all that your body does for you to keep you alive and respecting it is what will help you improve your relationship with food, your body, and your self-esteem. When you stop giving the numbers, all the power, you will notice how deserving you are and how appreciative you are of the body that you have. Ladies, your worth goes way beyond the number on the scale. I would love to hear your thoughts on today's topic. Please drop a comment below. And as a reminder, I do have one spot left in the Whole Body Trust program. Let's talk. Let's see if it's right for you so you don't have to continue to go through these weeds yourself. And the five-day and yo-yo dieting challenge is coming up February 12th. I'll drop a link so you can register and bring your friends as well. Have a great rest of your day. Please give the video a thumbs up, a heart. Let's hashtag replay if you're on replay. Bump it up to the top of the page so everybody can benefit from my words today. I look forward to hearing your words. Comment below this video and I will see you real soon. Have a great day.